Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you had a good Friday in the stock market. We're going to talk about stock market. Um, the Spy, GameStop. We've got some Reddit posts I wanted to read and kind of overview. Talk about our options, uh, rolling over, why this price action today. It just, it was as good as it needed to be. And uh, yeah, we're looking good. Sub up, like up, comment down, happy money, sticks around. And uh, we have Twitter here at Happy Money YT and a Discord you can jump on in the description. Um, Spy today kind of consolidated. Um, I mean, it was, it was bullish today, but not like a huge rebound. More, more just consolidation and uh, kind of a correction. Uh, at this point, I mean, momentum is still downward on it. But these two big green candles, it's hard not to uh, it's hard not to think it's going to keep going to all-time highs again. Even though we're still under the 9 moving average and our MACD is still bearish. Uh, we'll see. We, Yeah, so since it was so volatile to the downside so quickly, the, the momentum moves quickly with it. So to get it to actually switch back to bullish, either has to explode to the upside or it's just going to take a while. And by the time it gets the momentum on the lagging indicators gets to be bullish again it's basically going to be much higher It'll probably all-time highs again just like we saw back here so explosive action downside and then all the momentum shifted and then it's it just came here and then here and then it really wasn't even bullish until i mean i would say here's the first day where it's like okay it's at least a green candle over the nine moving average macd is still bearish but you know you could go along here if you're using these indicators so you'd miss a big part of the move so just depends on how you trade if you dip by or you know what what you do um but historically on spy we've 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 grinded up on this support line since covid which is yeah it's outrageous truly really outrageous there and then like probably like here Whoop. no not not there dummy right there um, so it's kind of, I guess it's come down a little lower than that, but eh, it's starting to look a lot like this again. So maybe all time has again. And one more, one more time. Uh, Elliot waves guy. I think he says very top could be 460. We do break out of this. The last final all time high before it corrects or kind of flattens and then corrects. We might see a high RSI. It might be much more explosive even so really if this thing next week if it starts to show if it starts to make new kind of break these resistances i'll probably go long on spy and even before macd crosses over because just like back here it's uh it's pretty clear um pretty clear it wants to shift that momentum back uh or it could consolidate honestly it doesn't have to just go up or down like it's possible it just comes up to you know a resistance here and then kind of comes back down and just consolidates and that's that's pretty likely too before it actually crashes it's just a consolidation in a certain range this thing hasn't even really hardly done that it's really just gone up and then it's just been a slow up and then crash and then slow up and then correction and then it's not really done i mean i guess you could call it consolidation but it's it's not like it's traded sideways really ever the only time it's traded sideways it's been very volatile and to the downside and then the upside just been very just <laughs> weak price price action for a long long time this is crazy um so yeah we'll see what next week has for that jackson hole i think's next week too <clears throat> could be cows for something we'll see what comes from that that could be huge or it could be nothing um gamestop again we didn't need anything special today if we just traded flat today i would have been just as just as stoked because our momentum is still bullish no matter what these what these market makers and hedges are doing to these candles trying to make us think it's bearish um we're good i'm not getting shaken out and yesterday i did say we'd probably bounce today and we did we had our bounce it was a nice bounce uh i was able to tell that uh mostly just from the support it hit and it didn't it didn't uh break through and then this nice hourly yesterday nice hourly green candle and i was like you know i think we're probably gonna bounce because I, on the day they, you know, our, our momentum was still bullish. So 
I wasn't thinking we were in a downward trend. So this is all good. We are consolidating before our run up. Um, and I think everything I'm thinking about this, I think it's still in play for a 350 run by, I think the latest it will be uh, September 10th, but I think probably, I don't know. Could be by next Friday or the Friday after. Could be either one. Um, I've got 250 calls for that. Uh, not not a huge position. I've also have credit spreads to help pay for it, and sometimes those don't work out though either. But um, yeah, so we're good. Daily MACD is bullish. Um, let me actually no, it's not on the four hour though. We did have some divergences though, which is a yep. So here's a RSI divergence on the on the four hour as well as a MACD divergence. Um, higher lows on the MACD. And then lower lower lows on the candlesticks and then same with the rsi so that's the divergence and that's where we're seeing it's now shifted to go north upward and onward look at our options today there was a big the monthly expiration so you know it only happens 12 times a year so a lot of shuffling around new floors new ceilings um so there, there was some shuffling and actually i didn't even talk about that I wasn't watching the ticker actually all day today, but when I was watching it was pretty awesome. Right here, it looked like there was definitely some failed delivers being covered. And I was hoping it was gonna keep running, but it the algos turned back on and controlled it, suppressed it. Um this one right here is 1420. Right there. Oh. Right here. So it was definitely inversing spy. I was like, okay, this is looking awesome. Had a lot of volume come in there and then it just kind of turned back off but still a good day a good solid green for four percent and showing showing that this floor and the support is that much stronger that much stronger of a base so happy with that we're making higher lows and these are higher highs so um i mean next week's gonna have to be explosive if we're gonna hit 350 by friday by next friday or even the friday after we're gonna have to start Start seeing price action like we did here. These were these were big days. That's 178 to 208, you know, and then gapped up. So um, if we don't start seeing that right away early in the week and it's just kind of a slow grind up or even consolidation, I'll probably sell the calls. Try and get a little bit something for them. And then and then at that point my my kind of thesis on this will be debunked, and I will then just wait until I have another another sign of either high volume or another indicator that um, it's coming so options uh, oh not not terrible I bought five calls of Astra I think I averaged down on them that's a, the rocket company they're gonna have they're gonna launch rockets I think the 28th so that's next Saturday and I got September September calls on it the charts a little funny just because it's uh it was a SPAC oh, that's why it's got this weird price action but it had good news so it'd rip up and but it's still looking good this did cross over the nine moving average but our MACD look it doesn't want to it doesn't want to turn bearish isn't that insane it just kind of flattens out right there on the line and just give it a little kiss so it might keep rallying from here after these couple days of consolidation it's had and then for the 28th I think I think we'll probably in anticipation for that rocket launch it'll start getting probably some media coverage and hopefully seeing rallies might be a sell the news thing might might close out of some positions before it happens but at least get the run up for it um let me uh let me turn the music down just a little bit yeah these new headphones i like, can't quite judge i'm just looking at my levels because these headphones are way more bassy and have like yeah um I think this is the first time I've had options on Apple. Isn't that crazy? So I got puts on Apple, and thesis is I was looking just at the Fang stocks, really having to do with it propping up the spy this whole time. Pretty much, most of the stocks in the spy have corrected and started correcting. I think back here, and are have been trending down. Uh, there's just a select few that have really just propped it up. And so I was looking through Fang, and the, the one I came up with was Apple to short apple so 
that is because of TA and the IV is really low and yeah that's pretty much it so the the PE ratio on it isn't isn't that crazy I mean I'd prefer a really high PE ratio to short in a market type correction crash but it's not it's not great or I mean it is great so it's not great for a correction I mean it's, it's still pretty high it's like 35 or something I can't remember kind of got this triple top going on uh, the MACD turned bearish here and uh, yeah I saw that and then we also have this this divergence on the RSI here and here so new high but the RSI is much lower than this high RSI back here so kind of anticipating uh, this to come down and also I mean on the weekly it's yeah so market crashes or even or even if this just starts to correct a little bit because it looks like it could take a bearish turn for a bit uh, these should do all right I didn't get crazy out of the money like I have on other market crash plays because I have enough of those just burning premium away um, I got 125 a 125 September put so not a whole lot of time because I think these expire kind of in the middle of the month so 125 I picked that strictly because just I was trying to just snipe the option chain a little bit and then I looked on here and I said that's a fine price that's kind of a support down here um, it's a pretty short amount of time for it to come down so if it comes down quick uh, I'll probably jump out of those but I got seven of those and I mean IV's low on them it costs 49 cents so it's like 35% IV or something so those and then GME yeah but I averaged down actually these 250 calls uh for next I mean I, I guess they're just far enough out of the money but some sometimes the options market maker will lag the strike price uh the stock price sometimes 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 the school of redundancy school and I don't think it's because they're too far out of the money but uh I think they're just lagging a little bit and because I got them yesterday on this red day at the honestly the actually the very dippiest of dips right here I literally bottom like bottom ticked it and I even picked that's well, I didn't pick the strike because that but that strike was the cheap was like kind of a little snipe and today those things still weren't up that was still down on them like maybe 10 percent or something and it could have been a little bit the spread on it um i don't think so though it for how much for us being up four percent today from this low from 150 we're already up to one almost 160 and then with this volatile kind of bumps in the middle of the day these things they're lagging they're lagging so that is one kind of play you can do regardless of anything else if a stock's shooting up and the option the options have not started r rallying yet you can jump in on those because sometimes they do lag behind so i, I think we just got I think that strike, my 250 strike, is just kind of lagging on it, which is awesome. I was able to average down some more today after today's price action confirmed it even stronger. You know, it wasn't a huge red day. Like, oh, well, see, look, let's see what's going on now. It was a strong price action day, and they didn't go up. So I'm like, all right, I'll take some more of those. Thank you. Thank you for that uh, discount. I guess now, at the end of the day, they're up a little bit. Oh, that's a put. Um, let's see. 250. No, yeah, it's, it, it, it's pretty much break even now. So these are 250s. This is, I think, the most leverage strike if I'm anticipating 350 by expiration. Uh, that's why I went with that. And then we've got all our credit spreads. I closed out of some, but I was actually able to get back all my premium on it. So I received two grand or so to open it. And then um, it was in the money. It was a 162 and a half. It was actually like this same strike, but for today. And just because of the widespread and just some, I don't know, option chain arbitrage, <laughs> there was there was some way I was able to close it out and get all my premium back or basically pay the same amount I received to open it, which is crazy because it was still in the money. Um, and then it's combining these ones weirdly, of course, which is kind of annoying. But yeah, still have still have debit spreads. Oh, look at this thing. OK, look, the debit spread actually came up. So this one is actually probably the coolest play um, until we get crazy volatility because this thing will just grind up with GME as it goes up. Uh, max loss is only $222. Max profit's 11000 So that's if GME is at 327 by expiration. 
and given if it's if it's up here higher sooner you know this this isn't a perfect chart because it doesn't can't can't incorporate what the ivy will be so uh i like this i like this play but spreads it's not going to have a, as much effect with ivy because you have a short position too so it's negating the, the ivy you have on the long position uh but at any rate i like I like this one. I'm like that it's up. Look at that. Something green in my account. Crazy. Uh, history. Dash. I got Dash puts. They had news. And I think Dash, I think their PE ratio is pretty high. I shared the news on our Discord. Uh, hot news. And it was DoorDash abandons $400 million investment in gorillas. Some kind of bearish news. And I looked at their chart. Typically with news events like that, if I catch it early, I'll just try and get a real short term option. <clears throat> Sometimes I can get it quick enough to where I can flip them for a few hundred percent and just like real quick. I wasn't quick on this, <clears throat> excuse me. And I'm looking for more bearish plays and I looked at the chart and it, this whole thing up here looked kind of like Apple, Apple's top. And so I got some more time on it. Um, actually this doesn't look that good. This doesn't look like Apple. Okay, no, it, it does. So right now we've got uh, red under the nine moving average. We've got a MACD bearish cross crossover. Might just be part of this kind of pattern it's doing here. So that, but, but no, it's inversing. It's yeah, it's it's uh, it's diverging from this. Higher highs, lower highs. So yeah, it is. It's true. Same with this. The RSI lower highs. Higher highs. So yeah, this is a nice probably entry for some dash puts. I think the premium is kind of expensive on them though. So we'll see on that. Um, and that's, those Those are the plays that we made. Uh, we're up 4,200. I mean, it's not, well, it's unrealized. Stuff moves around a lot. This is unrealized. Uh, and then we have spreads and then we have big spreads on the bid and ask and so can't do a whole lot of that until until it's actually cash you don't really know <laughs> i found um i wanted to i was up last night sometimes i'm up at night and i'm just reading through reddit and reddit actually has like the best stuff i find is at night i think during the day it's just filled with children and trying to make memes to get karma and then at night like i actually find stuff it's weird um this is kind of crazy so we've seen these stats before but most traded international shares week eight nine that was, I guess, a couple weeks ago, but top five, Tesla, so internationally, of course, Apple, Myrna, GME. <laughs> GME is up there with some of the most, some of the largest, well, Apple is. <laughs> like, that's insane. <laughs> Absolutely insane. Yeah, here it is. Oh, and then the buy-sell ratio, look at this. Oh, 96%. I mean... <laughs> Even even if GME was was on the same trend line like right here, it wouldn't matter. This is just absurd that it's it's you know it's, just, it's crazy. Oh, um, that was one thing. So I was reading one DD talking about how SEC is now looking to oh oh this never mind this is something different open data enhancements. I think SEC is basically giving public access to financial statements and other disclosures made by public traded companies and electronic data gathering anal anal analysis and retrieval system. So I think they're basically opening up more information for public since they see that uh, I guess the public can do their job better than they can. I mean, might as well if you've got willing people that want to help. Uh, it only makes sense. We've the amount of data that's gone into Reddit is probably with with the limited information that has been presented to retail is insane compared to what we hear from SEC and what they are coming up with. So that's good. That seems really good. Um, oh, and then I was reading this other thing that they're implementing. A lot of stuff has changed. One of the person, one of the people from SEC just left a few days ago and they were probably corrupt. And I, I think we're starting to see some good stuff from that. Of course, the new GG guy, I think I think he's good. That's uh that's what I think about him right now. Um seems like he's doing a lot of good stuff or at least trying to. So this one's huge though. So basically I was reading this, I was like, oh that's really interesting. 
and then I'll go back to this. And then I read this guy. Oh, no, not that. Uh, that, that. Yeah, and then I read this guy. And this is kind of one of the ways they're manipulating the price. So this guy's like, placing an order outside of 500% either direction is market manipulation. So what the heck is this? Uh, this guy was trying to put a sell limit of more than 500%. You know, oh, this, you know, I want to sell it for 5 million right now or 500 million, whatever. And the broker says, no, you can't do that. And everyone thinks that means there's no squeeze. Kind of, kind of a joke there, but whatever. Um, and he talks to them and they say, no, that could cause market manipulation uh, if you put such a high ask. So then he's like, okay. And then he starts noticing on the level two. Uh, I don't know if it's in this right up or the other one, but yeah, you can see right here. So look at this, this is so interesting. I don't have actually level two, which is kind of funny, but I don't. Anyways, um, so there's 61,000 shares trying to be bought right now at, or at that time for one cent. You know what that does, especially with how low the volume is, that's when we're seeing just these gaps. That was This was literally the exact same time. So I put it in for whatever, a few minutes, few seconds, then, re then uh, retract it. But just having that low, that much, that many shares trying to be bought with that low of a, of a uh, bid drives the price down. And I, I could be wrong on this. I think this is, I think this is what's going on though. And so it's driving the price down. They pull it away and then it, it settles back. But that, that whole time it, it just drove the price down because, you know, it's supply and demand. It's supposed to be at least. And uh, yes, this guy's like, what in the world? It, why am I not able to put a put a limit sell for way up here if they're able to put a uh, limit buy for one cent and 61,000 of them so um, that was kind of crazy I saw that and then lo and behold before that I actually saw this proposed rule change to adopt exchange rules to establish a midpoint liquidity program named SRMEMX 2021-10 designed to provide retail investors with meaningful price improvement opportunities by executing at the midpoint of national best bid and offer. Um, shout out to these guys. I haven't been shouting out any of these Reddit guys. Sorry, their usernames are there though. Oh, well, aim the standard is a good thing, meaning the low bid ask. So I don't fully understand this, but basically they're trying to get rid of, from what I understand, they're trying to get rid of that practice that I showed just in that picture of of it them pinning the price this is a good thing meaning that low bid ask spread orders aren't going to negatively affect the stock or allow it to be pinned through the technique known as pinning which is placing orders for varying lower prices in order to artificially reduce pricing and then canceling the orders before execution this is nefarious nefarious and illegal practice currently being used by hedge funds to artificially reduce stock prices it's funny so i actually linked this article on the other one where that guy's like what's going on i'm like i think at cc is actually working on it right meow and yeah they're pretty stoked to see this since only orders are being processed on this exchange that would be at or above midpoint of bid ask spread, those orders will qualify for this exchange. So it's like a separate exchange where you only get to go through it if it's at mid or above. So I think it kind of, that's kind of my understanding. So the positive buy pressure, positive sell pressure orders through this exchange paying a higher premium to your broker. So it, it will entice brokers to use this exchange because they're going to get higher premiums for it. Uh, it is further incentive to use lit exchanges to pay more than payment for order flow over the counter dark pool changes or dark pool exchanges. Power of the people, SEC is working hard to change the system. GG and GS are going to force change in the system out of sheer necessity to prevent a total market collapse. Um, I don't, I don't know how this is causing uh, or delaying a market collapse or anything, but it works well for stocks. Is beta runs inverse market. Yeah, so we'll see. This this is kind of interesting, this coming up. Very interesting. One quick little thing, if you guys have a question. We've talked about negative beta. It's like, oh, why is it always inverse? Uh, negative beta just has to do with historical price action. And um, I think Jimmy got its heavily wet negative beta rating, you know, negative like 200 on some, depending on how back you, far back you go. Just from the, the, the sneezes already, the January, the March, the three different peaks that we've, we've had. During those times, long positions are being sold, short positions are being bought. So we're seeing the whole market being sucked into a black hole that is GME because GME is the biggest short position. And so it has this crazy negative beta, but most of the time GME just moves with the market. 
unless there's some sort of uh, margin call and liquidation. And that's that's when we're seeing those crazy, crazy price action. Um, or even the failed deliver, like we saw a little bit, a tiny bit, I think, today towards close. Where the risk margin call? This is why Jamie is potentially a good hedge against market crash. Not potentially. I think the best. The best. Um, this also actually is a good article. It kind of goes into other stuff too, which is... But um, this is talking about how these, the basically FANG stocks are what's pumping the S&P 500. Um, if you've been paying attention to the market, you'll notice almost everything small cap, pre precious metals doing poorly since February, except big tech, Amazon, Apple, Google, Facebook, Microsoft. S&P 500 is almost exclusively being propped up by big tech. And I think institutions are using them as cash like defensive instruments. So watch for large sell offs in big tech, Apple puts as a possible indicator of the short squeeze. I think the reverse repo agreements play a role, but won't get into a post, okay. ARK fund is not allowed to hold any cash. Instead, the dollars are parked in what Wood calls cash-like innovation stock, which includes Apple. The FANGs certainly meet that criteria. They're acting like defense defensives. So that's what she said. No, that's really what she said. Um, one more crazy thing. ETF. Um, so the creator of the ETF or whatever's going on with the NFT, I'm not sure. It's made a contract... Ethereum scan to buy and sell covered call options on individual NFTs. No put options. Bears must die. So covered calls. So basically just covered calls to where only if you own the shares could you sell a call. And basically removing leverage and trading on, I think, on a on a blockchain of some sort. Uh, it's, it's in beta. Buy and sell covered call options on individual NFTs, no put options because bears must die. This is beta, probably broken. You will lose all your money and bang us. Okay. Lots today. Hope you guys have a good weekend. I'm stoked for Monday. I'm really hoping that my guesses, my wishes, the DD, everything we've seen is true. Up half a percent in the after hours. Sub up, like up, comment down. Happy money sticks around. See you on Monday. If there's news that comes out this weekend, Holy smokes. That would be just dope. I don't think there has to be, but could be. All right. Peace out.